you're not going to be able to flash this one. Hey guys, a couple of days ago a news dropped that we have a new Son of NS panel device. You know, the successor of the original NS panel. And my NS panel is still running eWilling for two reasons. One, I kind of expect Son of to release something new. It wasn't from official source, but I had a gut feeling that, well, it's gonna be handy to have still original software instead of tasmatizing this, even though it's possible. And the reason second is that well, if you ever play with the next-gen editor, you know how painstakingly difficult and hard it is to design a good panel. So I never bothered because I have so many things to do and just to get that working is just hmm. But now we have a pro version of NS panels and this device is completely different even though it looks very similar on the outside. If you look at the product pictures, you'll just quickly assume that, hey, well, they just dropped the physical buttons and added a big screen. What's a big deal? Well, actually, there is a big deal because this is a completely different system. And, well, I have an early hands. But before I dive in and open it up and try it out, I'm not allowed to talk about everything that this device has to offer until the new firmware is out. So this is kind of just a first look. If you want an in-depth review, you'll have to wait till later on in August where I'll be able to cover it properly. On the website, I knew it's gonna be just a smart panel with a Zigbee hub inside. So I kind of knew what to expect. What I didn't know what to expect is actually how it's gonna work. Now, on the surface, it looks very similar to original NS panel. It has the same form factor. It obviously doesn't have the relay buttons, or my version, in fact, doesn't have a relays at all. I don't know if there is a relay version available. Uh, but it looks like the back is still module and easily swappable with all those Switchman M5 series I reviewed in this video. So whether you'll be able to have the relays or not, well, remains to be seen, but I think you will. Well, I might be wrong at this point. So the front display is bigger now. It's 3.95 inch and this is TFT LCD display. The viewing angles are okay. The brightness could be slightly bigger. It's very similar to original NS panel. I can't really complain about it. It will do the job, but if you're going to use it in a sunny um, areas, you're not going to get the best experience. Uh, after all, it's not IPS panel. Straight away you can see that there are two holes uh, for a microphone and one of them is going to be measuring the light level, so you'll be able to use that, which means you'll be able to interact with this device. And at the bottom you'll find also a grill which hides a speaker, so you'll be able to play sounds or maybe even voice over that. This remains to be seen. As there isn't much else to tell you from the outside, well, I'm gonna have a sneaky peek inside because they didn't tell me not to and I feel entitled and I always open my devices, so let's do this. The device is surprisingly easy to access, so you'll be able to unscrew a couple of screws and you are inside. And then, well, a biggest surprise of them all. Well, there is no ESP32, so I've mentioned you won't be able to tasmatize this because it's not running on the ESP uh, device. In fact, the product page mentions that the CPU inside this has four cores, indicating a more powerful device. Now, I w didn't want to delete the actual, actual processor because that's how I could confirm what is it, so I left it for now. But I was able to peek at the Zigbee component and they're going back to MG21, the same IC for Zigbee they've used on the original Son of Zigbee Bridge. More on that in this video. Now they're moving away from uh, CC2652 mostly because of the shortages. They already released a new revision of the Son of USB dongle which isn't using that CC2652, it's using MG21 instead and I already have it so I'm going to cover the differences in a couple of weeks because I'm busy. But for now, just to know that it is using MG21 IC for the Zigbee communication, which worked fine on the original Son of Bridge, so I'm not complaining right now. Another thing that got my attention was actual flash storage. It is eMMC storage from Samsung, which indicates that this device will have something serious packed in there in terms of OS. Now looking around the um, PCB, I also found unpopulated ribbon slot for the temperature and humidity, so my unit is not going to display this, but your configuration might vary. 
Another thing that was surprising was the micro USB port for OTG access, which is hidden inside. So in theory, if you expose the PCB, you'll be able to plug the micro USB and do some funky stuff with it. And more on that in a moment. The speaker on this device is surprisingly big, which indicates that the device is going to be quite loud and potentially will have a decent audio. So I'm looking forward to test this as well. All right, I think it's enough poking inside. Let's put it back together and test it out. Now the startup is surprisingly easy. No fuffing about with anything on your phone because you can actually do it through the device itself. And the first thing that gets my attention is the keyboard. Now this pop-up keyboard looks very much like on Android devices. Is this using an Android by any chance? Now quick look on Thing app, which I used to discover all devices on my network, confirms that this is running Android Oreo. So 8.1 if I remember correctly. So yeah, this is an Android device. You won't be able to zasmatize it, but you can very well root it. And we know what that means. As the device boots, it gives me a taste for the sound, which is actually, well, compared to a modern phone, pretty good. So we will expect a nice sound from this device, which is nice. And, well, the screen itself, it's nice and very responsive, even though it doesn't really show this that well on the videos. By the way, if you're concerned about those screens, artifacts, I could not synchronize my camera to actually get rid of them, so sorry. Well, we are stuck with them. But be assured that that 480 resolution by 480 looks absolutely lovely and, despite my clunky actions, works very well. One of the things that got me annoyed was in order to complete the Wi-Fi setup, I had to specify my region. And by region, I kind of assumed the country. It wasn't a country, it wasn't really a city either, because I've seen some names of the countries. But, so I've tried UK, I've Great Britain, England, but it only worked once I typed to London and I was able to find the location. So experiment with that. This is a mandatory field, so I hope they're gonna kind of improve the wording on that to make it clear what they want. The basic navigation on the device is very similar to the previous NS panel. If you swipe to sites, you'll be able to access either scenes or the list of full devices. Now, there isn't anything else right now yet, but I'm expecting extra screens to be pushed with an update. Now, tapping from the top of the screen and dragging it down will bring the notification bar, giving you ability to either add new devices, access notifications or basic settings for the device. Now, because this is also a Zigbee Hub, you will be able to pair the devices directly and use this as your control panel for alarm. So there are predefined different uh, alarm schemes that you can set with an easy button and you can also access remote IP camera. I'm sure you're going to be able to specify which camera you want to access, but right now I have a S-Cam or Cam Slim or Scam whatever they want to call it, I'll review it in here. It does work surprisingly well, even though the camera wasn't my favorite gadget from Sonoff. Part of the setup was to link with my Link account, and when I opened it, I've noticed that the card for the device doesn't exactly look the same as for NS panel, mostly because of, well, lack of relays and temperature information. Now, if you open it up, it has a completely different screen, which allows you to either customize visible scene on your device or visible devices, and add the gadgets, Zigbee gadgets, from the list to your device and pair it, just make it easy. The settings in there allow you to change the time zones, etc. So there isn't anything interesting or worth noticing. So for the most part, you'll, well, you can get away with actually using the device instead of looking at the Ewelink app. I'm not sure what's going to change with the updates, but hmm, we are looking forward to that for sure. So what's gonna happen next? I know from comments in the social media that a lot of you are expecting an update to the NS panel, the original one, and Sonoff has assured me that the OTA update for this device will be released as well as the update for the original NS panel, which means all the bug fixes, maybe not all, but a lot of bug fixes, is gonna be patched out for both devices so you can enjoy your brand new device. Right now, the device isn't available right uh, for the sale. However, you can subscribe to Sonoff List and get notification when the device is available for purchase. I'll be toying with this until it gets released, but one thing is clear, because this is an Android device, flashing with the mod is not going to be possible, but routing it, very much so. I'm not sure whether someone's gonna come up with, I don't know, Google Play Store, but that would be definitely interesting. And I know for a fact that this is not the only smart panel I'll get to talk about in the future, because I've got stuff lined up. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed that first look at Sonoff NS Panel Pro. So do let me know what you think about it, what you like about it. Are you 
in favor of the ISS like that. I don't have any information about pricing just yet, we'll have to wait for that. But if it's com well, competitive against tablets or cheap tablets, then it looks quite cute and I wouldn't mind devices like that on my wall. But the time will tell how useful they are. But I'm definitely looking forward to that ZigBee Hub functionality. All right, guys, if you want to more detailed review, you have to bear with me. You know how YouTube works and how I get notifications about new videos. I'm not going to explain you that, but I have some social media where you can dive into some more details about stuff I do and uh, extra updated information about the uh, videos, which I include in associated articles. So do check it out and follow me on any given social media. As for now, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.